remains of the zoo is a lovable ragtag group of misfits that sprang up initially as a fan group to ranting monkey, scribe light, some dumb American, and the joint lords of the night live stream show. Late night discussions in Discord quickly evolved into streams of their own, with each member bringing something new and different to the table for discussion. Led by the incomparable Reject PPC and the One Ton Hammer, the group rotates hosts known as Zookeepers. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Minions of the Zoo. I am your host for this evening, One Ton Hammer. I will be your Zookeeper tonight, Reject. Alright, and welcome to the zoo. I am the lucky Pop Tart. Inquisitor? Silent. <laughs> Scalp Rock. I'm Prospera. And I'm Della Hayes. Regular streamers, they're known as minions, and special guests are known as traveling exhibits. They're on a nightly basis. So that each show has something unique and fresh for our audience. Minions of the Zoo currently streams at 10.30 Central Standard, 11.30 Eastern Standard Time. Let's be xenophobic. It's really in this year. Let's find a nasty, slimy, ugly alien to fear. There's no more cutesy stories about E.T. phoning home. Let's learn to love our neighbors like the Christians learned in Rome. We know we ought to hate them. They're different, you see. We've seen their mean and ugly on movies and TV. The folks that ought to know have told us how it's got to be. The gospel truth is found in scenes from Alien and V. Let's wipe out any life form that seems to be a threat. We'll serve them up a genocide they never will forget. Cause if we miss a couple, they'll breed a couple more. And soon we'll all be hating twice as many as before. You see, aliens can never be as good as humankind. A more delightful race than us you'll never, ever find. So step aside, you star slime, we're ready for your worst. We know you want to beat us, enslave us and defeat us, oppress us and browbeat us unless we get you first. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the zoo. I'm your zookeeper tonight, Inquisitor. Uh, minions joining me are Eeyore. Hello. Hello. And Mr. Adam. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Awkward pause, then hello. <laughs> so how are you gentlemen this evening? I'm going to be painting some more ne Necrons. Yes, painting some Xeno filth instead of the glorious guardsmen. Hey, guess what? Wait, nigga? you are? My guardsmen are painted. How painted are your guardsmen? Oh! <laughs> no comment. <laughs> and that's the thing. I'm not, is, uh, I'm not painting any uh any figurines, but I am paint paint pl uh, playing some uh uh. Dark stalkers, so hey. get used to that. Yes. Uh, the recent news is that uh, GW is putting out the guard uh, uh, box set uh, next next week for pre-order. So nice. Yeah, gonna have to set aside two hundred bucks there, Eeyore, if you want to add to your guardsmen. My intention to expand my guard isn't exactly based on uh, that new, the new stuff in the box. Well, neither is mine, but I want the Codex. Because, uh... I'll wait just... a month and it'll be all on Waha. Well, yes, but, you know, having the actual Codex means that I have a reference on hand. And I can actually play games with my guard. And not have fucking missing rules like fucking Battle Scribe. Or shit that gets wrong like fucking Waha. Uh, Laufer's actually become really good at, get, at catching that. 
Well, all I gotta say is, uh, the other day I was, you know, combing through Battle Scribe, in particular, uh, that uses Waha as a reference, and Death Marks were missing their uh, trans-dimensional, uh, or what is it, dimensional translocator uh, rule entirely out of Battle Scribe. Which is the Deep Strike rule? Yes. Like, it's not, if you have Battle Scribe right now and you, you know, make a Necron list, uh, the dimensional translocator rule is just straight up not in it for death marks. Well, that sounds like a Battle Scribe issue. It is. But they use Waha. As one of many sources. Just saying. I can go right into the logs I, and see how recently that was fixed on Waha. I would rather have the what's actual... A, what's a Waha? Is Waha like a eBay? Waha or... is uh, a Wikipedia for the uh, Warhammer rules, essentially. Uh. Run by a lovely Russian named Lauper. Hey, I don't know how we're supposed to be about with Russians on this channel. Uh -oh. The Russian government can kiss my ass. Russian that, people are okay. That's my that's my uh, rationale behind it, is that the Russian people are fine. It's the fucking governments that suck. Same with the Chinese. Fuck you, China. Notice I didn't say fuck you, Chinese people. I said fuck you, China, as in the fucking country, not the people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you said China. China. Don't um, get us all started on that. China. <laughs> But I don't understand. It's China. China. Um, <laughs> I was going to say because uh, I didn't want to have to stop playing as Zangief. Uh, yeah. Well, Oof. all you got to say Look. is, you know, if someone someone sits there and starts uh, getting angry at you. What? Oh, uh, nah, nah. I, I, I'll show it off when I paint it. My roommate uh, just built his uh, bloodthirster because uh, after I finish up the uh, the Necrons here, I think the major focus is going to be on my vampires and his demons. Uh, hey, hey, tell uh, so Bug I said what's up. Uh, Age of Sigmar. Uh, Adam says what's up. Oh. He says so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, say, uh, he might uh, come over next weekend so we can play some Underworld. Oh, on Tuesday? Like, out in, uh, what, where? Well, like, what's the bar? Uh, Donkey Inn. Donkey Inn. <laughs> Donkey Inn. <laughs> oh, hey, shit. Um, no! <laughs> uh, quiz. I don't, I don't know about your timing, too. Um, I don't know if, if you're awake and available around, like, uh, 11 or 12. Dude, we can go get lunch and shit. Oh, yeah, you know. that, that's perfectly viable, man. And I say, I essentially what it is that from my my apartment, I need to leave here at around uh, 2.30 uh, to make it to work on time. Because I like to give myself an hour just in case. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, any, any time, like, you know, before that, yeah, sure, we can go get lunch, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can combine my... Uh, breaks and lunch into one mm -hmm. and just have a have a nice uh nice luncheon yeah sure man anytime just let me know and yeah like i like i said the uh uh we were saying we were talking about before we went live uh I, oh uh, yeah uh over over the weekend here i played uh there, there was a big uh, event at the uh, warhammer store where uh, everyone was playing um, the game uh, Warhammer Underworlds, which is like essentially a one part war game, one part uh, card game, one part board game. It's uh, it's really interesting. It doesn't take up that much room. Uh, you can play it on like a coffee table. Uh, you can you know bust through it really quickly. Uh, it's competitive, but not like hyper competitive or anything like that. It's it, it's just a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this game. And I'm trying to get more people into it and play it. How uh, how customizable is it in uh, terms of like uh, uh, changing up your armies? Uh, 
Uh, not very, uh, if that makes sense. Like, what it is that there's a whole sh there, there's a huge variety of what are called war bands, uh, which are you know the the, the kind of army that you get, but uh, they are immutable. You don't you don't really customize them. Instead, what it is is that each one comes with like certain specific upgrades for their uh, for the war band in the process of playing the game, and those come in the form of the power cards that you get. But each one of your war bands come with their own power cards that are designed around the war band. If that makes sense. So really, it just yeah. comes down to the fact that you know when you when you go into it, you look for a war band that you know that speaks to you that appeals to you mm -hmm. and you play that i say there's there's one i, I told uh, the guy that runs the the warhammer store i'm all like I, I need to go and pick this up uh when you get it in stock again uh it's a war band called hexbane's hunters and if you look at the leader of hexbane's hunters it, it, it it's a witch hunter inquisitor <laughs> <laughs> so it's like i i to. And I was thinking about it too. It was like if they do another big, uh, uh, you know, like in in store sort of uh, event for Warhammer Underworlds, I'm thinking I need to have Hexbane's hunters. I need to paint them. I need to play them. And I'm gonna wear my costume for Ren Fair while I'm doing it. So I'll be in there in like armor and with my with my flintlock handguns and all sorts of shit like that. Just, you know. Nice. I think it'd be fun. sounds like a fun time yeah yeah like I said we, we, like when we played those games at, at the store it, I just had so much fun I was all like I, I need to get all my friends into this game <laughs> I say and uh, that's another thing too is that like I have a variety of war bands you can try out uh, I have seven different war bands now because I have three of the box sets and then one of the uh, individual war bands that you can buy uh, so, you know, when it comes down to it, I can, like, describe what the warband is all about, and then you can sit there and say, well, I want to play that one. Cool. All of them work. In fact, actually, the game, the demo game I played while I was at the store was a mirror match. Uh, I was playing, um, the Crimson Court, which are all vampires, versus another guy who was playing Crimson Court. That doesn't sound too bad. Yeah, it was really fun. I say I lost horribly, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm still learning. It was my first game. I wasn't expecting to win. Always leave room for growth. Exactly. That's my approach to painting. That's my approach to gaming. That's my approach to everything. Art. All of it. And what's even cool, too, is that uh, Warhammer Underworlds, this game that I've just been, you know, laboriously uh, uh, shilling here, uh, there's going to be a video game version of it, too, coming out. It's going to be on Steam. Is it really? Yeah, Shit. it's going to be straight up just a port of the, the, the board game. Who's running it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know who's developing it. Let me, let me see. I'm going to look that up. Let's go here and go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Warhammer Underworlds mm, Online. Warhammer Underworlds Online. The name of it. On Steam. Oh, it's actually, it's actually out. <laughs> So you can actually play it right now. <laughs> um, it's uh, nine ninety nine, so it's only ten bucks. But there are uh, oh. expansions, and each one of the expansions costs you know blah blah blah. Uh, and it's uh, each of the war bands, the different war bands uh, cost you know so on so forth. And uh, that's where they're gonna nickel and dime you because each one of the war bands is like, uh, well, let's see here. Some of them are on sale, some of them are not. It's between four bucks and seven bucks uh, per warband. But uh, when you buy the warband, you get it, and then you can, you know, play them. Uh, let's see, do they, do they even have uh, the Crimson Court? Does not look like it. Does not look like they have the Crimson Court. That sucks. Oh well. 
But, uh, yeah, no, the, uh, it, it is straight up just a port of the, uh, the board game. You just, you know, it's got animations and all that kind of stuff. Here you go, it's, uh, this is the description on the, uh, on the, on Steam's website here. Lead your fighters to glory in the ultimate PvP dice and card strategy combat game. Warhammer Underworlds Online pits mighty warbands against one another in eternal battle for glory in the realms of the Age of Sigmar. Damn. Uh, Bug says you can get it all for 97 bucks. Yep. Yeah, you can buy it all in a bundle right now for 97 bucks. If you want to spend like 100 bucks to, you know, get everything in the game. Personally speaking, I would rather spend a hundred bucks and get a whole bunch of like physical minis and you know play it in, in real life. But uh, the developer oh. is uh, Steel Sky Productions. Never heard of them. <laughs> yeah. You Probably know, just Kevin, a minor yeah. studio that did the grunt work for GW. Oh yeah. yeah More people. <laughs> I'm looking at their, Have they uh, done any other uh, catalog? Any they, other games? They, they've done a lot of games, but they're not they're not huge ones. Oh, none of them that I've ever actually heard of. Let's put it that way. Are they mobile games? No, they don't look that bad. I mean, they look like actual games, but they're like I don't know. Doesn't they just look like you know small indie games? rather than anything huge. So it's, I guess it's kind of ambitious to see them take on something like fucking Warhammer Underworlds Online. So. And it looks good. I mean, the if, if you look at the actual uh, trailers and stuff like that for Warhammer Underworlds Online, it looks really good. So. I don't know. I would, uh, I'd recommend it, but at the same time, it's all like, you know, I personally would rather have the the actual, you know, physical minis. Also, Hate Camel joined us. Hello, Hate Camel. How's it going? It's going all right. How about yourself, my friend? I, well, I'm taking a break from doing chores. I saw uh, you guys went live, and I was digging the uh, Hades soundtrack, so I figured I'd come hang out oh, for a little yes. while. Hell yes. Hell so, yes. The only pro the only complaint I have about Hades is I cannot play that while I'm but passively listening to a stream or a podcast or anything, yeah. I, it has to have my full attention. Yes. Because, like, the <laughs> music just makes it so much better. Yes. And the voice acting. Like, you know... And the voice acting, yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean... But, like, you're just sitting there just, you know... You know... Yeah. Slashing and hacking with that, that soundtrack in the background. Like, you lose hours of your life at a time just yep. in the blink of an eye. Say so, yeah, I've I've said it before and I'll say it again. Uh, I think Hades is actually uh, as close to a perfect game as you can possibly get in the, the modern day and age. I still haven't beat it. Uh, Neither have I. I. <laughs> well, I mean, like I've I've you know I've escaped Hades multiple times at this point, but like there's still like oh, stuff I have to not. do. I have not. I have not, I have not even beaten Hades yet. I've, 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 I play it on the easy mode because I, I don't play it often enough to be any good at it. No, see, like, that's the thing, man. I don't, uh, I, I don't ever play a game on, like, anything other than normal difficulty. So when it comes well, to that... The story, the story had me so hooked. Like, I got to know how this ends, man. Same. And then I'll, I'll go back and play. Like, I, I have multiple saves. I have I have the one where, like, I've completed it a bunch on, on the, I guess what they call it, God mode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the one that gives you like uh, permanent benefits based around how many times you've gone through it. So it's like, it, so like by the fiftieth time you've, or 50th well, no, time like on, I you're, think you're, uh, it's like Babby's first. The, uh, the more you life. die, like the more uh, uh, of a power up you get. Yeah. So like you'll take less damage, you know, like if, if you die, than the the you know time before that. Yeah. Oh, and and. Diesel bug says there is no beating the game, there is beating the story. Well, yeah, I haven't beat the story, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But even if even if I do, eventually, uh, I'm gonna go back and play it on increasing difficulty because like I do want to be good at that game. It's 
fun. Yeah, it's a really good game. Like I said before, uh, I've I've not even beaten Hades yet, and I have uh, you know I've, you know so I've not even seen like everything the game has to offer, and I'm willing to put you know my 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 gamer reputation on the line and say that Hades is as close to a perfect game as you can probably make nowadays. It is. I'm a filthy casual, and I love that game. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's it, 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 from voice acting to music to gameplay to animation. Everything in that game is amazing. Top notch. Yeah. And I, I, for the life of me, I cannot remember who gifted me that game. Uh, shout out to whoever it was in the Chimp Change server that did that. Mm -hmm. Easily, easily the uh, uh, the best gift I've received in I don't know how long. Mm -hmm. And think about it this way too: like the game, you know, for, for those people who were like on the fence of it, uh, you can get it on Steam for I think like ten bucks. Like it, it, it's it's cheap as fucking free, and it's worth way more than that, in my opinion. Oh, uh, if you can get it for ten bucks on Steam. Snatch that up quick, fast, in a hurry, because it is it is so much more valuable than ten dollars. Yes. But yeah, I mean, uh, just just the soundtrack alone, man. You put that on in the background. Don't even have the game. Just just the soundtrack. Just play that. Yeah. You you will you will march through whatever activities you got to do in no time because mm -hmm. it just pumps you right up. Yes, it is. I say, I, and you know what's even better than that is that like, you can you can listen to all of the uh, soundtrack to Hades on YouTube uh, for free, and they even have a, um, a a playlist set aside that's just the metal cover or the the metal versions of all the songs. So Sweet. you don't nice. yeah you don't you don't even play the uh, the like the, the the other like regular versions of the songs. It's like the 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 metal reprise for like the boss fights and shit like that. It's fucking awesome. I mean, even even just the regular regular songs are pretty Amazing. damn good. Yeah, yeah. The music is the music is fantastic. The voice acting is fantastic. Like I said, the the art direction. What, what's the, the farthest acting. you've gotten in that game so far? Uh, I might to uh, I I can consistently every single time get to Hades. I just have never beaten Hades. Okay. Like, uh, what what's your uh, what's your favorite weapon to use? Uh, it depends. Uh, sometimes if I'm feeling it, I go, uh, the spear. Uh, other times I go, uh, uh, sword. Okay. I, I played a vampire build once that, uh, I got, uh, Hades into his... Because here's the thing, like, the first time I, I, uh, I, th I think it was the second time I actually got to Hades, I beat his first phase, and I thought, oh my god, I just did it! And then he goes into a second phase, and I'm like, FUCK! Oh, shit! <laughs> Uh, but you uh, got like that la that last little bit of health left. You're like, I did it! I yeah. did it! Ah, oh, fuck, man! <laughs> but uh, yeah, the um, and, and I think like uh, pretty consistently, I can get Hades on his on his second phase too. I just haven't been able to push him over the second phase. Uh, but uh, yeah, the um, the uh, sword is is like the 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 big main one for me. Uh, I remember there was one that I did. Um, where I did the the vampire build, like right uh, right in the beginning, I got the uh, hammer of Daedalus and uh, got um, the one where you sacrifice health to uh, regenerate health every hit, okay. and uh, like it, it sacrifices maximum health and into perpetuity maximum health. So like if you if you take uh, any of the the increases to your maximum health uh, later on in the game, you actually get less of a benefit from them, but. Uh, every time you hit with a regular attack or even the uh, heavy attack you regenerate so I did that and uh, the reason why is because I was able to get that upgrade in the very first room you know like how you get your first upgrade for free and like when you start the yeah run. yeah yeah I got the Daedalus hammer with the sword and I got that upgrade so I nice. started off immediately with the vampire build and I got Hades to like 10% on his second fucking uh uh, phase and then I died. It sucked. Well, like, like uh, um, what will get me, uh, again, still playing on easy mode because mm -hmm. I suck, but, uh, 
like a because I, I've, I've played around with all the different weapons I, I'd probably say um, the sword I want, that or the, the shield actually is pretty fun to use the shield is okay uh, I actually didn't like the shield when I first used it I thought it was pretty shitty but um, then I had this one like I, I was just kind of like you know fucking around I'm like fuck the shield you know sort of thing I'll just I'll just use it so that I can use it and you know get the uh, progression on it and then put it away and play uh, a weapon that I actually like and then I got really fucking far with it yeah yeah um, I, I'm also also kind of a fan of, of range attacks so I would use the bow as well yeah the bow like a lot of people hate the bow like really hate the bow I actually really like the bow. Um, I think my second best run uh, in the game uh, has been with the bow. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you this much. The bow is the best for the ranged weapons. The gun is absolute trash. Oh, oh yeah. I, I hate the I hate the, uh, the rail gun. Yeah. It is, it is uh, trash. Easily the worst gun, or, or worst weapon just in the game. Um... I also really like the, the, the fist weapons, the, the gauntlets. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those the, are a uh, lot of fun. Yeah. Especially when you hit that uppercut. <laughs> yep. Well, it's like, you know, chaining every attack and then hitting the, the heavy attack at the end is just so satisfying. But the, the real meta of the game comes down to uh, utilizing your dashes and uh, strikes. Uh, if you can if you can perfect the dash strike, you can get really far in the game just by dummy fire. Well, like uh, there there for a while, I was uh, using the bow because I'd like to stay further away mm -hmm. because uh, it it would get me like like I'd be fighting you know dudes in front of me or whatever, and like some dude come up and shit me in the back, and and I I couldn't get spun around fast enough. <laughs> it, even, even though it's like you know just a mouse, you know just move your mouse and click, mm -hmm. like uh. I remember Monkey talking about like shooters, mm -hmm. how like he couldn't play with a controller. You know, had to do it, you know, mouse and keyboard. It's like I, I can't do mouse and keyboard on shooters. It's like one game I played where I did halfway decent as a you know, mouse and keyboard shooter and nobody plays that game, so it doesn't really count. Which game? What's the game? Uh, it's called a uh, 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 Heroes and Generals. Heroes it's a World Generals. War II, World War Two game. No, I never played that one. Uh, well, I mean, if, if there were actually, cause it's a, it's a online game mm -hmm. and if there were enough people actually playing it, it could be pretty fun. Like, uh, when I was playing it, it was just, I would just play like the small maps because it's, it's, you can play like a, a skirmish where it's just, you know, like infantry going up against each other. Yeah. And you can choose to be, you know, American, you know, as the allies, you can play as the Germans or you can play as the Russians. Okay. And uh, if you get you know more players on on the server at the same time, or whatever, you can actually go full scale like battles for like cities. Mm -hmm. But I would just play on the small maps because at, even at that point in time, hardly anybody was playing it. Yeah. So, and it was just you know, it was, you know, almost like Call of Duty or World War Two, you know. I say the the one that uh, I remember uh, we played uh, you know at least in, the, in terms of like the war simulators stuff like that because uh, we played it a lot back in uh, 2004 around then. Well, uh, 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 before was you continue, man, uh, I was almost I almost almost forgot. Hmm. Uh, like Monkey would say like he couldn't you know have you ever clicked on a like a file on your computer and missed? I was like, yes, I'm actually that uncoordinated. I've done that. Yes. But if you put like a PlayStation controller in my hand, oh yeah, I can. I can I can snipe your head off from you know mm -hmm. across the map. My problem. With, I, I grew up on PlayStation, so. The problem with the controllers for me is the fact that uh, no matter how fluid your analog stick is, uh, it's never going to have the same sort of twitch reflex ability that you get mm. with a mouse. It just you won't. You will never have it. Yeah. So that's you know when I I grew up playing fucking you know Quake. And, um, uh, oh, God. Uh, oh, oh, you see, I missed all the early PC gaming and stuff. I, oh, di yeah. I didn't come to PC gaming until, uh, six years ago. Yeah. Kimmel and, here actually alludes to something I've actually had to convince several of my friends of. Hmm. What, 
now that I've actually got a good computer and can actually play mm. on PC. I've had to set up a rig with a PS4 controller because I grew up on PlayStation. I'm used to the DualShock style controller. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, uh, yeah. I'm actually getting nice. into the central point to refute what uh, so sorry. Inquisitor was saying. <laughs> Screw you, Sega boy. <laughs> But yeah, like I, 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 I guess I do better without as fine of a touch. You know, I, I, I'm more of a blunt instrument kind of guy than, you know, that surgical precision that you get with a mouse and keyboard. I don't know. It, it, it's more than that. It's the fact that you're ergonomically raised to play on a controller. Same with me. The issue is people who haven't been, people who have been raised on computers, as Quiz has pointed out, and it is sort of right, but the issue is people that make the transition, it would take them yeah, too long. five, six years yeah. to get up to the same proficiency. Yeah, it's uh, and that's the thing, man. Is I don't, I don't begrudge anyone, you know, wanting to play with a controller for like a first-person shooter or anything like that. But I, I just look at it and sit there and go like, Ugh. <laughs> like I couldn't do it. <laughs> Like, well, I guess I can, you know, I can play it if everyone is on that level. But if I'm yeah. playing against someone who's on mouse and keyboard with a controller, I, I I look at that as like, oh man, I'm taking a step back. I'm giving them a handicap. Well, I mean, also like I didn't play a whole lot of shooters and stuff growing up until I don't know, uh, <laughs> Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Two came out. I say, man, like Adam. Do you feel like a goddamn dinosaur now? You know, hearing these guys. Well, I, I do. Poor, so I had to, I had to have games where like it was oh, like, I could play with my friends. Like a dinosaur. Like, I remember playing Quake One on Game Spy, guys. It. I think. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I I just didn't gravitate towards those kind of games. Uh, also, personally, personally, it's. Um, it's what kind of game you're you're looking to play mm -hmm. and i only say this because uh um i'm one of those let's add a a variable to this mm -hmm. um i enjoy the the wii remote and nunchuck controls <laughs> um it, it, pointer it, controls yeah it can be so okay. um i mean i like playing like uh smash bros on the wii uh but no no no, no, no. We're, let's like let's stick with first person shooters. Oh, for shooters! Yeah. Oh God, uh, I could not imagine doing that now. It's no, is no, it's 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 essentially like a mouse. You're just pointing at the screen, yeah. um, and uh, it's I don't know. I I guess it's one of those things where it's how you prefer to play your games. Because even with um, the PS4. I like that they added the uh, tilt motion, uh, so you can still everything is like uh, the controller base, mm -hmm. but you can tilt the uh, the controller up and down to to give you the the aiming access, and and it's one of those. It's I don't know. It's I guess it's an evolving thing, in yeah. my view. I'll I'll beg I'll beg Adam's pardon here, but did he just say that was introduced with the PS4? Six Axis was a PS3 release feature. Well, also, it was just so clunky on the PS3 that barely anyone ever used it. The uh, the the accelerator. Well, I stand my point. If it's clunky when it started, it's only worth mentioning when it's uh, reliable. Yeah. I so the oh, I, oh, 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 I played GTA 4 with six axis it's different but it's workable hey the wii remote was wonderful in motion control but it didn't really take off until it added the motion plus yeah. so but duh uh, <laughs> i say the the for me like the accelerometer aiming and shit like that uh it, it's it's fine in like casual games or stuff that's like not really all that competitive you know, not first-person shooters where you're playing with other people. If you're playing, like, uh, fucking Legend of Zelda and stuff like that, I I look like an absolute dickhead sitting there flailing around with my 3DS, but guess what? I only need to do the horseback uh, archery to get the biggest quiver once. 
So that's. <laughs> so what are we painting tonight, Quiz? Uh, my Necrons. My twelfth army. No, thirteenth army. Bog. The, I, I had not heard. I had not heard of these guys. The Necrons. They're um, uh, essentially <laughs> the way the way I like to to, to pithily sort of uh, explain what the Necrons are to to someone who doesn't know. Uh, they are uh, ancient alien Egyptian uh, Terminators uh, who are uh, have given up their their uh, normal mortal bodies for uh, self healing robot exoskeleton bodies. Yes. Uh, so ancient Egyptian Cybermen. Yes. Okay. I don't know how oh, deep into the re weeds you want to say, but that exchange wasn't exactly willful. No. Well, some of it was. They were tricked into becoming uh, Cybermen. Okay. By, yes. By the Star Gods. And the Star Gods who uh, uh, originally caused their, their original mortal bodies to uh, be horrible, tumorous cancer lumps. And uh, so when the Star Gods decided to give them their, their metallic apotheosis, uh, they then decided that uh, they were not going to take that shit from the Star Gods, uh, learning that they've been, they've been tricked. So they uh, developed this technology that uh, shattered the Star Gods into little tiny pieces and they trapped them inside Pokeballs, and now they play Pokemon with their gods. You tricked me, so I will use you as a Pokemon for 60 million years. Pretty much. Hmm. It's pretty good. Uh -huh. I love their story. <laughs> hey, have you seen that they have a... The Pokemon has a mimic? A what? Like a, a chest yeah, that opens there's up a new Pokemon you? that's uh It's a goblin Pokemon that is shaped like a treasure box but it's really a gremlin in uh in gold i mean i'm not all that shocked this is this is the game series where uh there's a there's a monster that is just a key ring full of keys it's it's literally it's... jangling keys in front of a baby oh my god i'm <laughs> so far removed from Pokemon. <laughs> there is a Pokemon that is that, Adam, by the way. I am not lying. There's also a Chandelier Pokemon. I saw the Chandelier. I was, you know, I was shocked at the uh, the sword Pokemon, so... Wait, is this a sword? Aside from playing, like, a Pokemon game on, like, N64 with my sister, I never really got into the Pokemon. I was way too old for it. When Pokemon came out, I was, what, 16? <clears throat> yeah, um, I was, when it came out, I was still in grade school, but it's like, uh, closer to junior high than, you know. My sister, my, my middle sister, she, she was around the age when, like, it, it hooked her for a while. Uh -huh. I, I remember, uh, <laughs> I remember getting in trouble at school because uh, uh, my sister brought her Pokemon cards to school and some other kids brought their Pokemon cards to school. Oh yeah, I know about the and Pokemon card craze, yeah. They, not that they were actually playing the game, but they were looking to trade and I was, you know, wheeler dealer deal making type. And uh, how many uh, just... children did you bilk out of their Charizard and sell it for thousands of dollars? Uh, only one, and I got in trouble immediately because, you know, like, I guess he told his sister, and she was also in my grade. And, Fucking narc. Uh, he realized, <laughs> you know, he got duped, you know? He, he didn't realize he he had a... a, a was it a Zap... Zap... Zapatos? Zapatos. Zapatos, Yeah. It's like, oh, this is supposed to be like, at the time, it was supposed to be like, oh, this is a good card. Oh, trade him like three shitty ones, you know, four shitty ones, whatever. You know? Yep. And yeah, you know, handshake agreement. You know, you get four, she gets one. We all walk away happy, and then he realized he wasn't happy. 
so like, she had to give it back and you know, take her shitty cards back and then she got upset because mom wouldn't let her take her cars to school anymore. You know, like, if, if I'm going to get called by the principal because you guys are, are are fleecing people, no. All right, so I can I can tell you exactly when it came out. Uh, for North America, Pokemon Red and Blue came out uh, September 28th, 1998. So I was 14. Uh, I was much more concerned with my first girlfriend rather than playing fucking Pokemon. <laughs> Oh, so 98. Um, yeah. Uh, I, 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 been, I lived I in a Digimon nine. household, thank you. <laughs> Fuck it. Oh, I, yeah, I, I'm I, not I, kidding you. I, 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 been, I had true value cereal, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I would have been nine when that came out. My sister would have been around seven-ish. But, like, you know, it took, you know, a year or two for that to kind of filter you know to my area so this would have been around 2000 ish mm -hmm. when uh we got in trouble for like i said fleecing this kid and, and you know like you I, I was old enough at the time i was like i knew the phrase buyer beware <laughs> you little flipflum and he didn't <laughs> you just you just you just fucking you just horrible oh horrible yeah man I, I was I was looking for all kinds of deals to cut back in the day. Uh, I believe now they, they 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 would call it you know hustling, you know being on that grind. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. I was like, entrepreneurial yeah. back then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur with my Charizard. Oh yeah, like I was, you know, I I was, I, I was I was doing that. I was a, uh, uh, you know. Doing a little bit of usury on the side, you know, loaning people out money for like candy days and whatnot, you know, mm -hmm. getting then, them to pay a pay a vig. Yeah, and then you had uh, uh, your 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 big brother there with the baseball bat to come to collect. You know? I, I was the big brother. Oh. Like, I didn't need anybody <laughs> to collect. So yeah, you know, I was like, hey man, I'll give you four quarters, you know, for you go get a candy bar. I'm gonna make Monday, you offer you can't refuse. Monday you come back, you give me five <laughs> quarters. You see how this works? <laughs> so so yeah. I I, I, I could have easily ended up being like a loan shark or a bookie if I if I broke the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, those are honorable pieces of work. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, well, yeah, now they just take it online. I mean, you know. You yeah, I mean, I, I, I was, I was, I was born at the wrong time, man. I should have been, you know, a couple decades earlier, because, you know, by the time I came of age, you know, they already had the online gambling. You know, yep. I, I'd have got squeezed out before I even got started. Yeah, you had the uh, uh, I don't even remember the fucking names. The the guys who did the CS:GO gambling. Who got fucking nuked on their channels and shit like that? Oh, with the skins. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't know anything about that other. Like that's that's the only detail I remember is some kind of gambling over skins. In uh, game. I was like, what? Yeah. Total trade volume was over six figures, and uh, when Steam slash Valve cracked down, uh, I think total value lost and destroyed was over a million. Yep. Yeah, see, I can't understand that for for a, a video game skin. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Nope. I say the the closest I ever got to any of that kind of stuff was when I collected the uh, the Steam trading cards to get the uh, like the the account upgrades and shit like that for Shadowrun Returns. But even then, I was just trading all the ones that I've been accumulating like over the years that I've been getting for free. So I never spent a single cent on it. Like, if you look at my Steam profile, uh, I've got, like, the Shadowrun Returns background, and, like, I've got a whole bunch of the emotes and shit like that. It's like, and I got all of it essentially for free, because I was just trading the uh, cards that I'd already, you know, accumulated for the Shadowrun Returns one. Yeah, I, I never, never was into... N never really had an opportunity to get into like any of the card games or uh, tabletop games, anything like that. It wasn't a 
Well, wasn't anybody really doing it around? There's this game called Warhammer Underworlds Online. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> Hey, this is an, actually an opportune time. Uh, oh, shit. I'm sorry. Unless GW spared us money, stop advertising. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> just, just see quiz, you know, like every Sunday. It's your boy, Warhammer <laughs> Online. Warhammer Underworlds Online. Honestly, if GW were to make a full Warhammer 40k online version... Like... A, a version of the tabletop game for 40k rather than like you know a real yeah. strategy okay. like full-on ninth edition done to tabletop oh also the rts were you about to talk about the dawn total of war war hammer series well, there's also dawn of war which is 40k wait there's a there's there's a base <laughs> excuse me while i while my steam wallet did, gets a little lighter i was gonna say did you not know about dawn of war yeah no dude it's yeah dawn of war well okay here's the thing right uh dawn of war one dawn of war two really good dawn of war three garbage trash game don't even worry about dawn of war three dawn of war one and two fucking fantastic dawn of war one uh is like a time capsule back to third edition warhammer uh and it has literally every faction that was uh, that was there in third edition Warhammer, except Tyranids. It was the only faction that did not get a Dawn of War one release. And then Dawn of War two came out, and it was just uh, Craftworld Eldar, Space Marines, Orcs, Chaos. Or no, no, it wasn't even Chaos. Chaos didn't get introduced until uh, the first expansion. Uh, so it was Space Marines, Craftworld Eldar, Orcs, and Tyranids. Where's the guard? Uh, the guard were... Well, okay, for Dawn of War 1, they were introduced in this first expansion called Winter Assault. The the first, uh, like, Dawn of War 1, the first uh, game... Because I, I remember I played uh, Dawn of War 1 in the beta, in the closed beta, when it was uh, still being made. Um, Dawn of War 1, when you bought the first game, it was Space Marines, Craftworld, Eldar, Orcs, and Chaos. Uh, then you, uh, when the first expansion came out, it added the Imperial Guard, and that was it. Then the second expansion came out, added the Tau and the Necrons. Third expansion came out, and it added the Dark Eldar and Sisters of Battle. Yeah, I, uh, I might have spent a little bit more than I wanted to. But the, in, in, the entire franchise pack was 25% send all yeah so so basically i got all the dawn of war 3 stuff free okay that's fine i mean uh, dawn of war 3 is 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 bad it's not good uh dawn of war 1 uh all and all of its expansions uh basically think it is it is a regular base builder it is a command and conquer it is a warcraft it is a starcraft it's exactly the same as all that uh mm. only warhammer um and then uh dawn of war 2 is actually different you actually build your squads how you want them to be built, and that's it. Your squad is your army. There is no base building, there is no resource hoarding, there is no overwhelming victory against your opponent. You build your squad and then you have to strategically keep your squad alive while eliminating your opponent until you win. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really good. I like Dawn of War 2 a lot. Uh, but yeah, Dawn of War 1 is really fun. Dawn of War 2 is really fun. And then Dawn of War 3 is just not worth it. Like I said, nothing of value was lost. Nope. How much was the, uh, the whole bundle? Uh, 162 Canadian. That's not bad. Steam estimated that if I bought each item individually, it would be two, 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 four, bleh, <laughs> two forty. Gotcha. Uh, what's really cool about Dawn of War Two as well? Uh, they uh, the first uh, really big expansion added uh, the guard, and the guard are actually uh, it's it's really weird. This this is how like prosaic uh, and prophetic 
the uh, new uh, guard codex kind of is, um, or uh, how Dawn of War 2 was, because I think Dawn of War 2 was released back in, I don't remember if it was 2012, it was around then, it was like 2010, 2012, um, somewhere between there, and uh, you could mix guard regiments in Dawn of War 2. You could have a, like a squad of Cadians and then a squad of Katachan. What you talk about, uh, 2012, 2013, it was released in 2009. 2009? Oh, wow, okay. Uh, it's only a year before my earliest estimate. Uh, but yeah, it's, like I said, that, like, it, that game was fucking prophetic when it came to, uh, its, uh, uh, distinction for that. It's also where, um, uh, I'm sure you've probably seen all the memes and shit like that, uh, of the Blood Ravens. You mean the little the magpie marines? Yes, that's where they come from. They come from Dawn of War. They were originally introduced in Dawn of War. Fucking magpie marines. Yes, they're there to steal all your. Hey, shit. quiz. Yes. As, as the the one non-initiated person in the Warhammers here. Yes. May I change the subject for a moment? As long as it's not anything on Twitter. Damn it. <laughs> okay, w what's going on on the twatter? Well, I, I know Quiz, you know, you know he's All you're going not to do really is make me the... hate. Well, no, no. Actually, I, the, the thing I wanted to talk to you about was if you'd seen what's going on with the check marks. Oh, about uh, uh, it being a premium you have to pay? No, no, not that. even that. <clears throat> not even that. Uh, this, like, happened today... Uh, like Kathy Griffin got her account suspended. But, like a bunch of the check marks have been going around, like changing their profile pictures and their name, their handles or whatever to Elon Musk mm -hmm. to like, uh, you know, show him that you know, oh, you know, making it to where anyone can be verified. And, well, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, so like she got her account suspended, and and some other some other check marks who you know I've seen over the past couple of days doing that. I've been getting the hammer too. It's like, ha, ah, how how do you like it? <laughs> but uh, uh, they do know that if that if Musk could swing it the right right way, they're committing misdemeanors doing that, and SEC violations. Well, he'd ha uh, he'd have to spin it, but he could do it. Uh, it's funny because like somebody uh, uh, uh the guy Benny Johnson. Here, Breaking, Kathy Griffin has been permanently suspended from Twitter for impersonating Elon Musk. And the real Elon, he responded, actually, she was suspended for impersonating a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I mean, I don't know how Twitter's going to do with him being the boss and calling the shots and whatnot. No clue. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't have any inklings as to you know, how much better or worse that the site will get but it has been entertaining so far you know all I gotta say about it is I don't really care how it goes you know if he drives it into the ground good so far Elon's been doing good Well, I I, I kind of got that uh, that old uh, that old Chinese proverb of like you know we'll see you know you ever see uh, Charlie Wilson's War, Philip Seymour Hoffman's you know at the end of the movie you know talking to to Tom Hanks and he says you know gives him the whole story of you know you know the young boy gets a in the village he gets a horse you know isn't that great we'll see and he falls off the horse you know breaks his leg oh isn't that horrible oh we'll see you know? yeah that's that's horseshit. That's that's one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, you know, uh, it could be good, but we never know. It's like, okay, and then when it's good, it's good. And when it's not good, it's a, uh, well, we could see. No, yeah, no. What he did, I would say, in terms of just letting the public react to things. Um has been a fun positive change 
uh, I think it was the White House that said something like Social Security was going to go up yeah. or has gone up. Oh, the uh, the cost of living uh, yeah. yep. adjustment. <clears throat> the COLA, cost yeah. of living adjustment. Yep. The, Point the positive. It's been in, I don't know how long. That sounds Since nice. they use the current metrics. It was, uh, yep. it was signed in the... But it was Nixon. Uh, yeah, powered by Nixon, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and they, yeah. they 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 uh they had a little uh was it bluebird or whatever their little fact well, checking I mean, deal it, it fact look, checked the white house on that it's 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 a point in matter of being held accountable for for what's being said and if you can prove the point for the opposite all the more power it does I'm, I'm not and that's a completely like neutral stance it doesn't matter what's being said. If if you can sit there and be like, "Oh, I found this bone, and it uh, it proves that there's giants in this area," and then they look at it and it's like, "No, that's a Brachiosaurus bone or some sort, you know, like some dinosaur bone or some shit. It's not a giant." Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go for it. Do that. That 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 helps everybody out, right? Well. My, I whole guess not. Is, Shit. my whole thing is I don't want to see it used partisanly. You know, fact check everyone equally. You know, when some yeah. Republicans say some shit and they're absolutely fucking wrong, nail them on it just as much as you would any Democrat. Yeah, that's that's I said the giant bone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, when it, if it's a, if it's like a goofy thing, like yeah, the, we but should be able to. Yeah, if if this is going to be applied unilaterally for for you know every single person, I don't see this as a bad thing, because it no. means that it's going to expose political swing for the absolute garbage that it is, and dumb people will not have the excuse anymore to sit there and say, "Well, the government said this." It's like, no, the government said that, but that's not reflective of the truth. The truth is right here in front of you, being fact checked for you in the same post that the government tried to spin. Yeah. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm sick of, I'm sick and tired of people sitting there lying about absolutely everything. And everyone does it. Every single fucking person does it. And then they just, you and know, I'm people him. believe lies. Or making excuses for lies. That's the, that's the thing that I kind of have, have issue with, you know, where it's like, oh, well, okay, they lied, but you know, you know they kind of meant this and you know they they meant well or you know they but they, they raised tried. awareness adam it, look they lied like we cannot do that yeah. we can't work we cannot operate on that on lies. Yes, full, full we most, like i am I'm, I'm full on aware that uh you know we can dismiss the goofballs and the uh a-holes uh myself included uh but yeah, I'm um, not gonna sit here and say that everything out of my mouth is 100% accurate. But yeah, no, I am. Uh, but I'll sit here and say that you know, whatever, whatever I'm saying, I'm trying to tell you, whatever, you know, whatever my, to my knowledge, is the truth. And if and I you know out, what? If and, I turn out to be wrong, cool, correct me. And I'm yeah, no, yeah, corrected. I, I, yeah, exactly. I, I'm willing to be stand corrected, and I'd be humbled to do that. Yes. Uh, I'd be the Iron Sheik. I let me be humbled. Just don't put me in a camel clutch. Yes. Um, <laughs> but it, it, this is this is where we're at. You know, we're, we're we're slowly finding out these people who who are willing to be humbled and who aren't, and they're willing. You know, they're they're gonna go. Uh, if this if this is mile. indicative of a culture change that allows people or that that actually you know because like you, you, we've heard this the phrase a lot hold people accountable if this is actually going to hold people accountable in such a way that you know you can't lie in politics anymore then i think that could be a net positive but if the the change is coming through twitter i'm a little dubious about the veracity of that claim because of my absolute contempt for twitter so, you're not gonna buy a blue check mark? No, I'm not. Uh, tomorrow, no. 
The audacity that no. anyone would sit there and think that I would is fucking disgusting. Anyway. I Sorry, no Elon. I don't either. I don't think that uh, buying Twitter was worth it. Uh, you bought a uh, piece of shit and are trying now to bronze it. But guess what happens when you bronze a piece of shit? It's still a piece of shit. I don't yeah, know, man. I think, uh, I think it could be... <laughs> like, I, I remember... I remember back in, like, 2009. And I've, I've probably told this story before. But, uh... Do any of you remember the Green Revolution in, in uh... Iran? Yep. No. Well, spoiler alert, it, it didn't take. Well, yes, obviously. Um... But, like, uh, this is Obama's first year in office, and... <clears throat> You know, you had uh, you had this protests and stuff going on in Iran, and they were thinking, "Oh, this this is opportunity." You know, this we got a chance to get Iran back. You know, and apparently, a lot of the people that were you know organizing these protests were doing it on Twitter. And so, like the Obama administration actually went to Twitter to ask them to hold off on doing any server maintenance that would cause the uh, site to go down for Iran. I was like, it could have, it, it does have utility. It's not a complete piece of shit. It's been turned into a piece of shit, but I, I think it could still, you know. I'll also say this, my, my opinion of Twitter is extremely myopic. It is purely just on my interactions and my estimations of my interactions on Twitter. And in well, yeah, my it's, it's, opinion, it's not necessarily. Well, well, hold on, hold on. I think I think the both of yous um, uh-huh. have uh, your viewpoints could be uh, interjected in that um, it is a myopic uh, viewpoint for a lot of people, um, but it also has sway for a lot of people, um, and that it uh, it's obvious in their uh, veracity in defense of musk purchasing the uh, the utility uh their uh animosity towards them getting fired and changing things it's obvious that there's there's a sway that twitter has even though everybody wants to goof on it and be like ah you know who you know it's it's nothing you know eh. they're just going on there and it's, it's poo poo jokes and all this shit it's like, well, no, it. Th- there's news that goes through it. Oh, no, you know, I, I people, completely understand I, Quiz's point of view, but... I don't like, think that news should go through Twitter. <laughs> it shouldn't, but it does. I know. And that's well, a sad... I mean, it's sad, but it's, you know, it's it's a weird... Sad but true? Yes. Yeah, uh, I agree sad with but that. True. It is sad but true. And I say, I don't think that people should be getting their news from Twitter. I also don't think Twitter should be news. Which is well. Hold on, I, I feel the same way with uh, Facebook, but apparently I, Facebook is still a thing that is uh, I agree portraying with news. Too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would Facebook say this is going to have big layoffs it's now weird. too. Good. Yeah. If both of these yeah. media media giants fucking disintegrate in on themselves, I think that will be a net positive for the world because that will mean that people will be forced to go to other sources for their fucking news. And then yes, they'll, 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 be, they'll be a little bit more dubious about the claims of people, you know, making uh, uh, all sorts of uh, 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 um, uh, uh, appeals to authority or anything like that, trying to make any claims that they know what they're talking about or know, like, the facts. It, I, all that kind of shit. It, 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 it isn't questioned on Twitter when it, 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 the, the place where it should be questioned the most is on Twitter. I mean, you know what I mean? News, should, news should be questioned regardless of the medium in which it is uh, I transmitted. Agree. I agree. But, I mean, the idea that if, if Twitter and Facebook went away tomorrow, people would be, you know, more, you know, they'd be more dubious about a news source. Yeah, no, not a chance. So You're giving either. people yeah, no, way too much credit. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, uh, there's far too many people that are willing to just swallow what they're given. Uh, regardless of anything else, because they're they're they they want to be fed partisan uh, confirmation bias. And oh yeah, and it, I think that happens like the older you get. So like you're yeah. not gonna, you know, you're not gonna break that you know cycle with somebody who's been on Twitter since you know 2007 or eight, whenever it you know, went you know wide. Yeah. You know, 
Hey, man. They're, they're going to be I, 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 in I fully they're, believe they're gonna whatever find... Tim Pool says. Uh, I or, haven't listened what's, to Tim What's Pool. his name? Uh, Philly D? Oh, God. Philly D. Can, can, can we not years. talk about that sycophantic Californiaite <laughs> bullshitter? Everybody, it's really also everybody to make cares. you very happy, quiz, and to possibly correct him on a small uh, grammatical mistake. That layoff at Twitter has occurred with an estimated 3,700 people being laid off. I, think he said I didn't Facebook. say Twitter, nope. I said Facebook. Yeah, he said Facebook. Facebook. Facebook is going to start a massive layoff. Oh, I thought you said another layoff is about to happen oh no 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 uh, well, another I mean, yeah another layoff could, but yeah it is another yeah it's another way yeah 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 but like apparently facebook has lost like 700 billion dollars of value since well, they started with the whole metaverse yeah thing. as i say it's a metaverse thing you say what it was is that uh you know when fucking zuck uh decided to try and so open weird. that up for fucking uh investors he kind of wrote himself into the, the the hole with that. So then, now because of that, he's you know left on the hook for that, and all of the investors are sitting there going like, oh, "Hey, we want our monies. You know, we want to yeah, our, our checks come due. Give us our money." And uh, Zuck is, is is on the hook for it. So it's like it, it was a, a failed launch to begin with, and then he was just kind of forced into doubling down on the failed launch. Well, did you see like they tried to uh, they tried to, to show like they updated to where like now your little avatar thingy has legs? And it's like, yeah, I heard. Actually, they don't. <laughs> yeah. That that was just you know <laughs> that well, wasn't gameplay footage. That was cinematic, folks. Legs. I I, I want to yeah, I want to see uh, um, uh, sweet uh, the, can can I buy sweet baby rays and a bookshelf on the Walmart app through uh, or a Walmart uh, simulation through metaverse? Zuck, can I, I do that? Because I mean, that's where I, you, I, that's where you put your sweet baby Ray's barbecue sauce, right? Is in the bookshelf. <laughs> I For those that don't know what I'm referencing, yeah, yeah. the very first uh, video where where, where Zuckerberg uh, 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 announces metaverse, he's he's got uh, a bottle of sweet baby Ray's barbecue sauce on a bookshelf. Uh, how how long until like they finally admit that dude's just an android? Uh, if he if he has it on his bookshelf, I don't know if I want to have Sweet Baby Rays anymore. Well, I really liked it, but no, I mean it's that's just the... now that's unnerving. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? And you know me, I'm sitting well, he here needs thinking. It for his <laughs> well, I'm I'm one of those people who, oh hey. Did you hear somebody, uh, John Lennon said, I buried Paul at the end of Strawberry Field. And, oh shit, Zuckerberg has uh, Sweet Baby Ray's and his bookshelf on his right side. I mean, what does that mean? I don't know, but I'm sure shit oh. not going to have Sweet Baby Ray's anymore. That's for, <laughs> that's for damn sure. Well, that's like, uh, uh, he, he, doesn't use, he doesn't use Sweet Baby Ray's for his coolant. He uses that to uh, marinate... Uh, uh, rotisserie chicken over his radiator oh yeah well it was such a it's a good it's a good barbecue that's the thing it's a great sauce it's okay damn it no no zuckerberg is not a reptilian that is most definitely an android that was created by the grays in the <laughs> hollow moon to fight the reptilians here get with the program Listen, man. my tinfoil hat tells me that i probably shouldn't or at least you're clear from this uh, baby rays until the formula is corrected. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, so baby rays turn to the freaking frogs gay. <laughs> yeah, but they taste delicious with, yes. with sweet baby rays. So, uh, I might actually try frog legs if you barbecue them. I've heard that frog legs are pretty good. Yeah, but I don't trust the French, so you know. <laughs> you, you gotta get like some. You gotta get like some black dude in Alabama who like really knows barbecue, and he's like, you know what? Fuck it, let's try some frog legs. Say, frog legs some... and crawdads, man. I, I would try yeah. that. Creole. Some, Creole, yeah. Get some Creole, dude, in fucking Louisiana. Make your fucking uh, frog legs and uh, gator steak. That's it. That's that's the next trip. Let's go down south. F dude, okay. 
Adam. Adam. If I can swing it, I want to do this trip, all right? We can't do it during Mardi Gras because it doesn't run during Mardi Gras. But there is a train. Oh, shit. There's a Minions train. at Mardi Gras? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. But no, there is a train that leaves from the Chicago station, okay? From Union Station. One way, nonstop, down the Mississippi, uh, straight to Louisiana. It's from Chicago to New Orleans, okay? Doesn't run during Mardi Gras, unfortunately. But it's called the That's Pullman. The name. It call, it's called the Pullman Line. Uh, it is a luxury train line. You spend. Why wouldn't they run that during Mardi Gras? That's I don't like know. Excellent time I to make money. <laughs> I don't know. Like but you know what? You know what I think it is uh, because a lot of the cars are actually vintage. They were like made in the fifties. Uh, it probably can't. So they don't want a lot of assholes going to to get beads and beer. Well, no, it, it can't. It can't. Uh, it can't handle the snow. Because one of the one, oh, of, the car, okay. one of the cars that they have is a uh, is an observation car. The entire ceiling of the car is glass. With recliner seats that like rec recline all the way back, so you can like watch the stars as the train you goes. Know, I, I would travel so much more if we had like, like dedicated like passenger trains that you know just going all over the country. Mm -hmm. I, I I do not I do not want to ride a bus. I, I do not want to no, go no Greyhound. Bus. Yeah. You know anywhere. I, I took one bus trip cross country. Never again. Yeah, I don't I like you. flying. I, I, I want to keep my ass on the ground, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't care if, you know, you're, you're safer taking a plane than, than driving on the highway. You know what? Driving on the highway, I'm the one driving. So. Yeah, you're the one in control. <laughs> you don't have to... You know, I don't right. have my pilot's license. I've never <laughs> flown a 747. I'm not going to try and risk it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And, 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 well, you and know who hasn't I'm, had a pilot's license? Bob Shatier would give me some side eye in the TSA line if I showed with a parachute. So. You, you know who uh, who hasn't had a pilot's license but but flew uh, uh, flew a, a plane to, to completion? Slade Craven. Ooh. <laughs> you say you that like it's supposed to mean Craven. something to me. Have you not seen the Red Letter Media uh, video about uh, um, Turbulence 3? <laughs> no, no, I have. It's really I've, I've not actually ever. I've never watched Red Letter Media. Oh, you should. They're great. I love the Red Letter Media. But I like, mean, I've I've heard good things about them. It's just like yeah. Uh, there's so much stuff that I I just like. Oh, you know, I should check that out. You know, so so yeah. and so recommends it. Yeah. And never get around to it. We've got a whole Same. channel in in my server on Discord. It's like just the list of things that Campbell hasn't seen. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no the 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 here let, let me let me just uh, uh, find uh, uh, a still of, of Slade Craven. Uh, the 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 premise of the vi of the the stupid movie is that there's this death metal shock rocker that uh, is uh, uh, doing a show on a 747 and like there's this Satanist sort of plot that uh, if you um, uh, get to uh, a million like viewers and then crash the plane in this ley line in Alabama it like will summon Satan or some sort of stupid shit like this hmm. but it's it, it's it's all that uh, along with uh, this you know stupid hijacking plot and it, it, it's just now, an see, absolutely ridiculous and silly fucking movie but yeah that that does sound that does sound like fun but I've never seen it and that is further proof that I'm not Jack Cochran because I'm going to bet you he probably has seen it uh, well, maybe. I don't know. But, I mean, that's exactly what Jack Cochran would say. So, you know, he's further reinforcing the point, too. I mean, I'm pretty sure Jack would be like, oh, yeah, I've seen that movie. That's pretty cool, you know. Or, or no, I haven't seen it. I'll check it out. At H8, uh, Slade Craven... There you go. There's, there's Slade Craven. Let's see here. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I have questions. Anyway, so Adam, there's this, <laughs> there's this luxury train, right? Uh, 
Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't run during Mardi Gras, but one of the things I was actually wanting to do is I wanted to do, uh, like, a trip down to New Orleans, and if you can't go during Mardi Gras, when's the next best time to go for New Orleans? And I was thinking, um, in June, because that's, um, uh, oh, God, uh, was it St. John's Eve uh, is in um, early June, uh, so that's a time when the Pullman line is running, and... Uh, there is still like you know a party sort of atmosphere in New Orleans, and I would love to book like a, a, a round hold on, trip hold on, on the Pullman line and do that. Is that is that a time where it's not? Because uh, we are talking about the South, so mm -hmm. is that a time where it's not like um, wet hot? Uh, I would assume that it probably would be wet hot. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so yeah, that's. That's one of those things where it's like, <laughs> yeah, where, uh, and like, like, uh, NASA astronauts where they have to go and through this training, yeah, um, be able to breathe. Look, <laughs> yep, you're going from Midwestern atmosphere to Southern jungle atmosphere. Yeah, right. I mean, well, it's not Yucatan or something like that. Yeah, it's but not it tropical, should be. But it's, but it's pretty close. Yeah, yeah. This is this is what we're gonna get in the Americas. Um, good lord. Uh, yeah, I think that'd be uh, a lot of fun. Organize that as a trip sometime. Maybe not yeah, this next cool. year, but you know, it, that, that would definitely be a fun trip. Um. Yeah, and we can. The Pullman line is like a thousand dollars, but it's a thousand dollars round trip. So it'd be about as much as like a plane ticket. Well, there's enough Terrible. time to plan mm -hmm. it out. How long's how long's the trip take? You know, from... uh, I think it's eight hours. Uh, or eight no, hours? No, 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 sorry, no, I think it's a little bit longer than eight hours. Um, let me let me look it up. Uh, let's see here. Because um... like I said, man, a pass passenger trains do sound like fun. You know have you a little you a little cabin you know maybe you know if it's a longer trip you know have something like a bed or something because mm -hmm. like oh, i i can, oh, I, I can shit. sleep cheaper uh, than a thousand a room a roommate a uh, roomette which is like you know those uh those ones where you have like the the bunk and like you've got uh uh people uh like okay no so uh where you have like a room but it's like just opening up into you have like a sink and then a bed and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, those like little little tiny ones you see in like the movies and stuff like that. Uh, Four hundred ninety five dollars. Round trip. What is that? Round trip. Oh wow, that's not bad. No oh, wait, no sorry. Each all. direction. Sorry, no each oh, okay. direction. So yeah, no, it's it'd be it'd be about a thousand dollars. Uh, I. A thousand dollars is a tenth of what it can be on Sprint Airlines. Mm -hmm. But it's on a train. Yeah, what it's yeah. like to take the Pullman train from Chicago to New Orleans. Uh, here's a, uh, a a little article here uh, from Johnny Jet, uh, simplifying travel. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to ride trains all around the world from Amtrak's uh, Acela uh, along the Eastern Corridor of the United States, the Eastern Oriental Express in Southeast Asia, to the uh, Gone in Australia, and many uh, trains in between, uh, including all throughout Europe. So when the Pullman Rail Journeys invited my wife and I to experience a rail journey that was uniquely American, we jumped at the chance. Pullman Rail Journeys began in November 2011. After years of planning, research, and acquisition of historic trail and rail equipment, they advertise that their cars take passengers back to the golden age of train travel, uh, when the journey was <laughs> as important as the destination. It sounds too good to pass up, right? Pullman officer, uh, offers a once-weekly round-trip itinerary between Chicago and New Orleans, and seven round-trip departures between Chicago and Denver. We took the uh, Chicago to New Orleans route. Here's uh, more about our 9.5 hour journey. Or sorry, 19.5 hour journey. So a little bit less than two days. 
the the way it's being described, it's also sounding a little bit more like a cruise. Yes. But on yeah. rails rather than. Yeah, like uh, you, oh, you, you get meals, you know, you have uh, a sleeper car and all sorts of stuff like that. Well, what I mean by that is there's going to be destinations dotting the route mm. with full on excursions. Wait, Maybe, do they stop know. at points or? Let me see. Let me see. I'm just reading through here. I'm going to listen to this. There's Cab Calloway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? That'd be fucking awesome. Like, have that they're, like, <laughs> playing during the whole, like, ride. And then, like, when you get into New Orleans, it plays nothing but, like, New Orleans-style jazz. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. Uh, okay, so um, each car has a window that can't be opened except for in an emergency. Each uh, There's air conditioning and a small fan located near the top bunk, which switches just like a car's interior and have an Art Deco design, including uh, for the lights, which is cool. Our cars uh, were built in 1947. Uh, there are plenty of electrical outlets. Uh, cabins don't lock, uh, and if they do, we never locked ours. Uh, pillows are way too bulky for my taste. Next time I'll bring my own. Each guest gets a pa uh, paper bag of toiletries. Inside you'll find a bar of soap, shampoo, conditioner, body lotion, shoe mitt, uh, mouthwash, and vanity kit. Uh, the train is loud, and it's not that smooth, so if you want to get some sleep, I recommend earplugs. <laughs> stops! Oh. Here we go. The train follows the Mississippi River but never crosses it and makes 17 stops along the way. See the list below for the Amtrak's timetable. In total, there are uh, just uh, all are just for a minute or two, except for Memphis, Tennessee, uh, and Jackson, Mississippi, uh, where stops can be for up to 40 minutes. In those cities, it's up to the porter to let the Pullman passengers out, since the cars don't always match up with the platform, and some of the porters are nervous about passengers twisting an ankle. Our porter was cool and let us out. Uh, Amtrak pads the schedule by about 30 minutes to allow for delays as cargo trains get the right way uh right of way on u.s rails so there are stops hmm. okay cool oh you, you guys want to talk a little bit about video games again hmm. have you guys seen the code of conduct for call of duty no <laughs> <laughs> is there no tea bagging because that's because <laughs> that's sexual assault, you know. Well, well, no. Here's here's uh, you know, it's got three points here. Help us keep the game fair, safe, and fun for everyone by agreeing to all aspects of the Call of Duty code of conduct. Point number one: treat everyone with respect. We do not tolerate bullying or harassment, including derogatory comments based on race, gender identity or expression, sexual orientation, age, culture, faith, mental or physical abilities, or country of origin. All members of our community should be treated with dignity and respect. And that's the first thing that popped into my mind. It's like, well, can I still teabag a guy after I, like, no-scope headshot him? And, and, you know. No, it's sexual assault, you fucking rapist. <laughs> uh, well, the obviously. I mean, it's like, Lord. you guys do realize this is Call of Duty, right? <laughs> But yeah, they had to uh, uh, you know, compete with integrity. Competitive integrity is core to the Call of Duty experience. Progression is earned through good, clean gameplay. Cheating and griefing or other threats to fair play will not be tolerated. I, that I can, I can see understand. that for like tournaments and shit like that. But like, you know, because sportsmanship is a thing at tournaments. <clears throat> but even then, you know, some of the some of the best videos of like the the tournament scene for first person shooters and especially Super Smash Brothers are when people ab lose their absolute shit playing those games. Mm. And then uh, the last point is, uh, stay vigilant. Working together, we can keep the game fair and fun for all. Ah, oh, narc promote on your fellow players. To promote an enjoyable gameplay experience, utilize in-game tools to report any incidents or inappropriate behaviors you encounter. Snitches. Niches. I would say, you know, if uh, if Call of Duty were serious about this, they should have done that back in the Xbox 360 era, when you had all the squeakers just screaming the 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 dreaded N word every two seconds. You join a Call of Duty fucking uh, lobby, and it's nothing but just fucking racial slurs uh, all day, every day. 
That's just, that's I never, I never got onto like the voice chats. Like I just played the game. I didn't, I didn't want to talk to people. I never know? played the game at all, but I watched uh, several other people play the game, and it's like you join a lobby, and all you just hear is just a twelve-year-old kid just like saying the absolute worst possible things you could possibly think of. Yeah. Yo. Okay. Hold on. Um. Le- um. When Sanguine came out and hung out with us on uh, 4th of July, uh-huh. right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we were playing uh, Star Wars Battlefield 2. Um, and I was telling him, like, yo, dude, I've never experienced, you know, people saying such, you know, such words. Um, and then we played online and sure enough bam there there it was (laughs) yeah but honestly before then i've never you know just nickels everywhere just nickel 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 yeah it's everywhere but when i I think i think it was sanguine i think he drew it you know (laughs) they knew they knew he was a uh what does he call himself? A giant dwarf or? Giant dwarf, yes. Yes. Uh, so, I think I think he was drawing it, um, because man, it was bad. Oof. But yeah, no, yeah. Outside of that, but just mute it, you know. Was that? I mean, that's oh, no, my we, recommendation. We, we, we can't. We can't do that. Yeah. Oh. Because that, that's victim blaming. Oh. <clears throat> oh no! I was I was reading the Della said uh, COD lobbies are how I perfected my Herbert impression. It's also how I got them to shut up until the game started. <laughs> Herbert impression. Who's, Herbert's who's the pervert Herbert? from yeah, Family Guy. From Family Guy. Yeah. Hey y'all. Wait. You got a real pretty mouth. It- it's me again. Me. Just call and see where the muscly on paper boy is. He's got, he's got a Hope sh- he'll bring me some good news. You gotta sell it with your asses while you while you slightly whistle. I I can't do the slight whistle. That's I, can, I can barely get the the voice up that high. I can't get the 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 whistle on top of it. I All right, you have, I don't, to I don't think I've off. ever heard of call Herbert. Me. I'm gonna go and wait. What? You never heard of Herbert? Yeah, it's a Family Guy thing. I don't even like Family Guy, and I know this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, oh, oh, the uh, the old guy, the old guy, the old guy. Oh, the old Herbert the pervert. Yeah, that that always. Like, oh, okay. He's trying to get Chris to like fuck him. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. Okay. Yeah. Is that, 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 that one? It is it. Is it ever? confirm that his that that's his intention or is it just so heavily applied to video and or getting as far as they legally can i mean i i think he can pretty much says like get your sweet ass back here like a couple of times like he not actually to him but always like under his breath <clears throat> okay so it's a case of uh what's his name mcfarland going as far as he legally can before Actually, saying that. Yes. I think that's the joke. Yeah. Good lord. But yeah, like uh, there's that whole that whole episode where, uh, like they were in the witness protection program, mm-hmm. and he's just leaving voicemails. You know. Just wondering where the muscly on paper boy is. Get Hope he'll bring me some good boy. news. And then, like at the very one of the last messages they play before the end of the episode is, you know, it's like a, a "All right, you piglet son of a bitch, you starting to piss me off. Yeah. Call me, call me. Get your fat ass over here." I said the things that I uh, I always liked was like there's a uh, one machinima one. I can't remember who uh, who you know did it. You know, it was, it was one of the ones back in the day. But it was uh, uh, he was playing Call of Duty. And uh, one of the things that he would do is he would just body block, like, squeakers in the corner. And then he'd just, like, do the, like, 
You, do, you think you're in the dark, you can't do anything? What do you do? Night light. And you just drop, like, a, a, a like some, like, inconsequential thing and just, like, body block them in the corner and then just let the, opponent, uh, the, the opposing team kill the squeaker. All the while, the, <laughs> the kid is just sitting there screaming and crying. <laughs> <laughs> it was the funniest shit. And, of course, I found out about that because it got reposted on 4chan. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, bullying squeaky toys is a dash dos pastime. Yeah. Like I said, that's that's why I would never actually listen to like the lobby. Like I I didn't I would never have that turned on. I I never had a mic for you know my my PlayStation or anything like that. So I would never talk to him. It's like if I'm not talking to you, I don't need to listen to you either. You know. So I got to avoid a whole lot of that stuff. You know just by, you know, not caring. <laughs> um, when I played on a, on the computer <clears throat> and, like, uh, you know, Day of Defeat, um, I guess I just didn't care. <laughs> You know, or like you know, Unreal Tournament or yeah, back Quake. When I, back when I uh, played, there was, no, there was no fucking voice, at, you know, voice uh, chat at all. You know, Quake didn't have fucking voice integration. Yeah, and when it did, it was just you know, when you hear somebody like "fuck you, motherfucker," it's just like, all right. <laughs> I agree. I mean, I would lo always, always, uh, I would always love to do shit like that. Like whenever uh, I joined the, like a, a Unreal tournament, and, like I start winning, and then you, you get a squeaker sitting there just like screaming at you, you just <laughs> sit there and just very calmly go, "You should probably calm down." Yeah. See, I would have that problem playing <laughs> uh, football. <clears throat> uh, I, I like to play like NCAA football online, and I would get people who would just rage quit on me and stuff because. I'm really good at offense. Not all that great at the defense, but really good at offense. And it just so happened the team that I like to play with at the time, excellent offense. And, and yeah, like I had people accusing me of cheating and stuff. Like I don't, I, I, I don't know how to cheat at, at video games like that. You know, I, I have no technical skills. I, I can't, you know hack anything or, or do this or that but yeah just convinced that I was she's like no dude you just suck you know w one guy quit uh, I, I had just scored a touchdown to put me up like two or three points right end of the game he's got the ball uh last drive he's, he's got a chance to win the game but because like i went up you know with with like less than two minutes to go he rage quit and he was playing with the top ranked team in the game and like i already said earlier not that great at defense but then he like he sent me just a message you know afterwards like, like accusing me of you know cheating and this and that and you know hope hope you'll you know hope you pride yourself on like well, not really, because now I don't get any credit for winning the game because you cheated, you know, you quit like a bitch. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Tier. Well, see, that's Dirty the thing. Is that a man's got to know his limitations. They, uh, they, they build it into the, the sort of stuff. Like, if, if someone quits in the middle of the game, that counts as an automatic win for you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this was, this was a NCAA... 2011 that's, I that's think that's the sort of thing that happened uh, on the ladder all the time on like you know Warcraft and Starcraft and shit like that if you played on the ladder and uh, like and, and there, there were a lot of times when I would sit there and uh, play like just a regular game because like you know they, you had the different kind of game modes in those kinds of strategy games but like if you played a regular game with someone and I had this happen several times where I would win I would be winning uh, it was clear that I had outpaced them in, you know, all of the, the metrics and I was going to, I was going to win the, the game, right? They just straight up rage quit. And then after that, the computer takes over. Uh, but if, uh, I think Warcraft 3 was the first game that added it. 
uh, if your opponent quits like that, it immediately cuts it out of the game and it counts as a win for you if you're playing ladder. <clears throat> well, can we start well, with I, I don't think uh, I don't think EA was quite on that level uh, mm -hmm. back in the early 2010s. Um, but yeah, like a I, I think it would just be like you know it, it would it wouldn't count you know as a win or a loss. Uh, I think they would get like you know like a lower like rating for like sportsmanship or something like that. Well, there was uh, like in terms of like st real time strategy games. I'm not talking about like sports games. Uh, right, right. RTS games. If you quit in the middle of a game like that, it would actually lower your score, your overall ladder score, and mm -hmm. uh, it would count as a win for the opponent. Yeah. That's just the way it worked. You quit I mean, game, it. You yes, it, and, you're and essentially of submitting too. So like, if you like, because there were a lot of people that really liked to just go and just like fucking unplug the router. Uh, and they say, oh, it was internet issues. Uh, no, it was just because you were losing like a bitch. Uh, and um, even then, like when that was happening, there were a whole bunch of like forum posts sitting there saying like, well, I, I got disconnected. Uh, why does that count as a loss? I'm all like, because you did it yourself. So it's <laughs> yeah. pretty, uh, pretty obvious when, you know, the reason why you, you know, and, and it's even funnier because that kind of shit happened at tournaments too. Like, yeah, esports tournaments. Like, there would be a, uh, an eSport tournament where, like, a guy got killed in a game and then he'd just fucking rage quit and uh, 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 terminate his, his connection and then sit there and question why it counted as a loss for him. <laughs> like, but, yeah, like, uh, I, I, I really enjoyed playing that that game. Um, make, makes me wish I still had a PS3 because I'm sure there's still people playing it online because uh, I think with the last... The last... Uh, NCAA football game was like 2014 which I'm, I'm looking forward to them like maybe you know rebooting the franchise now that uh, you know college players can get paid for their name image and likeness because mm. <clears throat> that's what that's what uh, did it in back in the day uh, there's that uh, uh, lawsuit and Man, I, I I would really like I, I'd really like to be able to play college football again. Only only this time I'd probably just do it, you know, hook up a controller to the computer and play it that way instead of. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Well, well, I don't. I mean, can any has, has anybody ever like met somebody that actually has a PS Five? You know, like no. Are I, those things real? I want to get a PS Five. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is it weird if I say? Yes, I met somebody who has a PS5, and that was Weibo. Oh, real? Weibo's got a Weebo? PS5? Does she? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Why did we play the Switch when we were there? <laughs> well, no. Because <laughs> Mario Party. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good point. Well, um, but, yeah, no, like, yeah. I, I, I would, you know. Remember? It was fucking huge. And we were sitting there like, good God, it's like half the size of the television uh i think she had it didn't she have i think she had a fucking xbox or something uh you know xbox uh yeah well she's uh she's up, up to date let's just say that the, the, the xbox i mean squeeze me it's xbox <laughs> series x whoa well, I, excuse <laughs> me I, I always preferred PlayStation over Xbox for one simple reason. You know, it had nothing to do with, you know, fighting games. The actual console. <laughs> they had fighting games had, and the Xbox didn't. Well, no, it, it had to do with the uh, ergonomics of the controllers. Like, for some reason, the PlayStation uh, controller just felt like it fit better in my hands than. No, the... you are absolutely wrong on that one. The PlayStation controller only, only got good with four. Uh, oh. the, the PlayStation 1 and 2 controller, the one with the recessed fucking D-pad, is the only controller in my 38 fucking years of uh, playing video games to have ever given me a blister. I loathe that controller. The only controller, in my opinion, that's worse, because there's no function to it, is the N64. 
Whoa, dude. Okay, you know what? I don't know if we can be friends anymore. <laughs> um, this, sorry to say, Adam. fighting words when you slandered the, the, the N64 controller, sir. The N64 controller is absolute trash, and so was the console. <laughs> Quiz. I was I was planning on on having a a pizza night when uh when Goldeneye came out on the on the Switch, and we can we can have some uh. Uh, split screen deathmatch going. Uh, as long play? as nobody played as as uh. That's odd job. Uh, of course. Yeah. 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 You want to play it on the actual uh, N64? Because I have an N64 well, and Goldeneye because I got it for fucking cheap as free at a garage sale and I still paid too much. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, God, yeah, I, I want to play that I... garbage game. <laughs> When's the last time I played Goldeneye? Holy shit. Are, are you done, Mr. Sega? Hey, it's not even a Sega thing. That game is absolute Mr. trash. Sega. It always was back in the day. Yeah, that's <laughs> I'll a, be right back. A no response. Yeah, I was going to say. Mr. You know, Sega. You know, you know hold Adam on, is hold also on, hold Mr. On. Sega, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a... Um, dude, I really want to get the mini Genesis 2. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the second, second one. CD. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cause it, oh my god, it looks like uh, it looks like they got a lot of good things in it. Um, yeah, they got the was it the um, uh, Fantasy Star three? And they got a Lunar. And Lunar, yeah, Lunar Sur Silver Star yeah. Story. I say um, I'm I'm a little bit less enthused about that because I have Lunar uh, Silver Star Story. Well, for okay. CD. Well, yeah. <laughs> but it's and a good game. You also have <laughs> uh, an N64 with uh, Gold Golden yes, Eyes, so. You know, so there you go. So um, yeah, so I have something good and something horrible. So yeah, you gotta go. But uh, <laughs> okay, so there's the wooden and the what is this? The wedding? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they were talking about what was gonna be the next uh, a mini Saturn or a mini Dreamcast. A mini and Saturn if they so do a mini good. Dreamcast, are they gonna do the VMU? Oh, that'd be cool. I think they should. Yeah. They, they have well, to. They there, have to. There weren't that many VMU games. So, like, in, in terms no. of like, the, the, the VMU, it would just probably be, like, built into the controller. Uh, what would be it's, really cool. It's, it's essential because of the controller itself. Yes. I mean, the, the controller has a window yeah. for it. So, um, it, you can't escape it. I could see them doing a Saturn first just because it's it would be easier uh, well, and they can figure mm, out a I wouldn't say a dream say easier, thing. because the the, the... Because also because they could uh port a bunch of the games that are already out there like yeah. uh you know knights and virtual fighter and well that and that's the thing is that if they if they do a a Saturn mini right uh that would actually in my opinion be worth it because Saturn uh, like yes. games are just so expensive now. They are so expensive to get the actual cartridge. So getting an emulation machine would be worth it. Also, the the reason why it, it would be easier to make a Dreamcast one than a than a uh, Saturn one is because Sega, like, we did a a complete and total pendulum swing, right? Sega were one of the ones that uh, allowed EA and a couple of other people to have their own like firmware on their cartridges and stuff like that. It was after this big lawsuit mm -hmm. that involved both Sega and Nintendo that allowed uh, companies like EA, software developers, to have their own sort of hardware when they came out with their own thing. Nintendo fought it, but eventually ended up losing, and then Sega kind of was grandfathered into it. Uh, so like if they if they bought the license, they were able to do like hardware expansions on their cartridges if they wanted to. Uh, so you had things like, you know, EA with their super tall Genesis cartridges, and then you had the, was it Temujin for, uh, the, um, uh, uh, original NES, and so on and so forth. That's neither here nor there. What it was is that there was this whole idea behind piracy, and, uh, like, making media, uh, copy protected. And the Saturn was ridiculous with its copy protection. It was so thorough in its way to defeat people playing pirated games on a Sega Saturn 
that it was nearly impossible to do, which is the reason why people have been struggling to even put ROMs out for it, because the BIOS just did not allow for uh, unlicensed media to be played through it. Uh, so it was, it, was, it was a very long time for them to even put out an emulator for the Saturn, whereas the Dreamcast was so easy to emulate and pirate and rip games for, it ran on Windows ME. And everyone was able to just immediately go and, like, you know, with, with Ubuntu uh, boot parameters, build in, like, a fucking... E I have an SNES emulator for my Dreamcast. Ooh. And so, Wait. like, like with literally every single game that came on the SNES, including Japanese games. I uh, have an update to a previous topic. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh so... Kathy Griffin suspended from her account, right? Yeah. <clears throat> She's tweeting on her dead mother's Twitter account. Oh, no. No way. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. That's, that's, uh, apparently, like, she, uh, uh, she got locked out of her account at some point in 2019, uh, September 16th, 2019. Mm-hmm. And so she got into her mother's account to like uh, tweet about it, and so I, I go to go to her account to see like you know, like okay, well, obviously she was dead in 2019, mm -hmm. and oh, would you look at this? Maggie Griffin has retweeted Mark Hamill from three hours ago. Hashtag free Kathy. <laughs> <clears throat> it's like I see now with quiz. I can respect Quiz, you know, like, not, you know, caring, being able to just walk away like it's fucking Al Pacino in Heat, you know? Mm -hmm. Or no, no, I'm sorry, De Niro in Heat. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you know, just, bring you, know, like, you know, just 30 <laughs> seconds, you know, flat, gone, right? I can respect that. I can't respect, you know, somebody's like, I'm going to, like, my mother had a Twitter account. Mm -hmm. I've got her cell phone. I could use her Twitter account if I ever got banned. I wouldn't though, because it's creepy as fuck. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I mean, my God, woman, you you got it bad. And I'm I'm pretty sure like she was tweeting on her account before it got suspended about you know like going somewhere else. You know that whole I'm moving to Canada bullshit that everyone pulls. Oh yeah, everyone does. Yeah. We don't want you here. In fact, several of us want to go there. Uh, I didn't mean literally cat, moving to Canada. Cat, but... you was here. <laughs> I don't I care if you I... meant it or not. I meant what I said. <laughs> yes. But yeah, so... Uh... Hey, you know, Donkey, though, um, would it be out of the realms that you'd be able to uh, uh, find your journey up and hang out with us? If yeah, I was gonna say, uh, Adepticon. If yeah. uh, if you can come down for Adepticon, dude, fuck yeah. Oh god, um, Mick Foley. Oh really, Mick? Oh dude, uh, like, don't follow any celebrity on Twitter. At oh all. no, no, I, I I learned that lesson. I learned that lesson as soon as I got on Twitter because, uh, like, I followed some of the cast from Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, no, don't. That's don't when ever... I, that's when I learned that Ron Perlman is completely batshit insane yeah don't ever follow any fucking celebrity ever they're all but no trash. like <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it's mankind dude it's dude love yeah you know? i know but he's like i'm back on twitter for one day so i can plead with all of you not to give your vote to election deniers it's like dude just just shut up and wrestle Uh, uh, that, that, that's that's the one thing where it's like okay yeah they're, they're, that's where I could look and be like yeah social media was a mistake we shouldn't know this much about celebrities we shouldn't know no. you know their thoughts and feelings on every little thing uh, was, well you know what people, I, people should use social media to, to, to shit post I'm perfectly fine with knowing that kind of shit about a celebrity because that means that uh, I, I have that much more contempt for celebrity <laughs> I already have a lot of contempt for celebrity to begin with I find I'm, that yeah. people worshipping other people because of their art is, is fucking ridiculous. 
I've never worshipped yeah. anybody because of their art, but I mean, I, I could re- at least respect the art, you know? Yeah, respect the and, art, and not, it, the, not the artist. <laughs> well, it's it's making it harder <laughs> and harder to separate the two, you know? It's like... That's yeah, not. It's, it's really not. It's, it's pretty easy. All you gotta do is just sit there and say, hey, I like that show. I'm not going to ever interact with you as, as a human being because to me, you are only this character, not a human being. Well, well like, uh, uh, like Ron Perlman as an example. Like, I liked him on <laughs> Sons of Anarchy. You know, I like the show in general. Uh, I like his voice have, as, uh, as Clayface. Yeah. I mean, he, he was the superior Hellboy. Yes. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll put it this simply. Ron Perlman is one of the pro, most prolific actors of the mid to late 80s till the early 2010s, and is still doing work. Sure. But, uh, As an actor, he is fine. But like, so I was taking care of Nana Camel. I and, disagree with a lot of his takes. Yeah. And, uh, she had this one channel that she would watch on TV, right? Didn't matter what was on, really. She just left it on that channel. And in the wee hours of the early morning, they would play Beauty and the Beast sure. with uh, Ron Perlman and Linda Hamilton mm-hmm. and Lance oh, Henderson. God. And <clears throat> now, I had not ever watched Beauty and the Beast, okay? It was before my time, right? I did. Uh, I'm feeling old again. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're five years older than me, Quiz. <laughs> five years. But right? five dollars. One in one five. and one quarter presidential term. You're not that fucking old. Quit five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, it it was it was before my time of, you know, watching anything, really. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I I had no I knew about it because my stepmother loved it. Mm-hmm. She loved Ron Perlman as as the beast. As the beast, yes. And uh, so I, I was aware of it. Never sat down and watched it. And then, you know, as uh, as Nana Camel got worse and worse, you know, I'd be up later and later and earlier and earlier. And so I I would catch episodes of it. And it's like, okay, you know, there's Linda Hamilton. Cool, right? You know, cosmetic. Like, I, I, I still, you know, could respect, like, dude, you got to, that's got to suck being in those cosmetics, mm-hmm. you know, for all day, every day, you know, and like, like, night after night, I would see, like, episode after episode of the show. And it's like, okay, this ran for a while, it looks yeah. like. It was and I was like, three, okay, so I, I could respect that. But at the same time, even with him all made up, you know, like the beast, you know, in the, the sewers of Los Angeles, I'm still thinking about him pissing on his hands to shake, you know, with Harvey Weinstein. Mm-hmm. It's like, that really just takes me right out of whatever the fuck they're talking about. So, I mean, so yeah, it's like, it's, it's getting harder for me to separate that because, you know. Wouldn't, wouldn't Harvey Weinstein, heard, wouldn't Harvey Weinstein like someone pissing on their hands to, to, to shake his hand. I mean, I'm just saying. Well, I like seriously doubt it. Steam might be into. I seriously doubt it even happened, but the fact that he's sitting here crowing about it on Twitter, oh. it's like, why, dude? You know, w- would you have told that story if, if Harvey Weinstein hadn't got, you know, brought up on rape charges? No. no. If he was still running Miramax, you wouldn't say a goddamn thing. Yeah. You know, stop, stop acting like, you know, you're a big tough guy. Well, that's his image. I mean, I I don't. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not gonna. You know, ask George Clooney for medical advice. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit there and, and you know, look up at at Ron Perlman as being a, a tough guy. He's an actor. He's baby shit soft. He just plays a badass on TV. Yeah, that's all there is to it. That- I think you've now just described the reason why I have nothing but contempt for celebrity. Period. Doesn't matter who it is or where you're coming from. Your your entire profession is to is, is to play pretend. No, and man. I am not. I am not yeah. meant to. I am not meant to respect your opinion on anything. 
I I disagree a little bit because like there are some celebrities where it's like like look at Anthony Hopkins. He's like as an actor. Oh, Bono. Bono's the good person to look at. Shut up. Their, yeah. Bono, Bono is opinion. in fucking U2? Yeah. I yeah, hardly yeah, like yeah, U2 yeah. at all. He, he's he's making he's making the uh you know, the South Park reference. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I mean but Does Bono want reality, the bidding? Come on. He's a big big name uh well, no, I, I was like so Anthony Hopkins, like they were talking to, to him about, uh, you know, and he had that line about, you know, like actors are dumb, you know, like I'm an actor, like you don't want my opinion on anything. Yeah. Like I, I can respect that, you know, uh, uh, same with like Kurt Russell is like, I think actors should shut up and act. Yes. You know, it's like, okay, so, yeah, what, that's, that's, a, that's I, a valuable actual contribution to the discussion. Why do I need Here, to you, listen Kurt. to what uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is sitting there saying about uh, uh, having to go to the southern tip of the planet to get snow when he just got his GED? He was a high school dropout. We should also <laughs> take into consideration um, uh, both, both uh, Mel Gibson and Kanye West. <laughs> Easy? Uh, opinions. Why? Easy. <laughs> why, why do we need to um, take their opinions into consideration? Well, but just because, in all fairness, you know, we got to have uh, both, I guess, ends of the celebrity uh, spectrum. See, I, I feel bad for Kanye, <laughs> okay? Uh, not, not, anything, not anything you recent fucked. that's come about. I, 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 I haven't actually gone and you know paid any attention to what he's been saying here recently oh you've heard some shit i've i've heard bits and pieces but not you know like any, anytime it always anytime it comes up to like you know you know the jews is like i'm out you know <laughs> I, I, I whatever you're about to say like i don't want to hear you it, open the ya. can i did <laughs> but Damn it. Damn it. I, I still feel bad for the dude because he lived in that you know family of just media whores dude. and look what it's look what it's done to every dude who's been in, in that like viper's nest camel yeah he uh, chose that he did and and i i still feel bad for him because i mean look at look at lamar odom he was a nba you know star he was on multiple championship teams and you know he gets with one of those kardashians Next thing you know, he's ODing from fucking crack in a whorehouse. You know? I mean, you know... Uh, uh, the, I mean, you just had, look, look at Bruce. Jimmy, look had, at Bruce. Yeah, Jimmy uh, and, and, and Ja Rule, they they were just trying to be entrepreneurs, and then they got with Caitlyn Jenner, and look at Fire Festival. It's all her fault. Who is, who is the one who died <laughs> in a helicopter? That was to, Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant. To speak to oh, Adepticon yes. uh, next year... I am interested, but further discussion is better done away from yes. Susan. Sure. Because fuck you, Susan. <laughs> yes. Indeed. I have it. Yes. Well, it's obligatory at this point. It's. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, any of my nights, it's it's just going to come as, as rote that uh, I have nothing but contempt for YouTube and celebrity and all sorts of things. You just You just know this about me at this point. Mm -hmm. And, and well, speaking, of, speaking about Kanye, uh, there, there is one thing that I, I can agree with Kanye on. I too am a sick fuck, and I like a quick fuck. What? Because we, um, we are we are inwards in Paris, and we're about to go ben, uh, uh, gorillas. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know that song. <laughs> what? I said I, I've never I've only listened I've only heard like two Kanye songs and those were like what? back when he first broke out. So. You, should, um, you should listen. Like I don't recommend Kanye for any deep, uh, uh, insightful lyrics, but breaking down the lyrics are they, they, all of his songs are comedies, every single one. <laughs> yeah, uh, I love the one with uh, the. <laughs> I love the name escapes me. But no, the the one with uh, Bernie Mac at the beginning, I think. Oh, you mean Adam uh, Levine, isn't it? 
Um, so, Kitty, Kitty but, Stalker said, wait, Fire Festival was linked to the Dashians? Hmm? Yeah, uh, Caitlin, the, Caitlin, uh, or not Caitlin. Kylie? Kylie, Kylie Jenner, uh, was, uh, um, uh, I feel did bad an advertisement, that I know all these names. Did an advertisement for Fire Festival. Did, and of course did she didn't hand, go. Like a protest or a Pepsi or something? Yeah, yeah, while well, playing We Are the Lions, yeah. No. Um, and then after yeah, just, after the fire festival, someone ambushed her and said, "How was fire festival?" And she laughed. I mean, think about <laughs> those. Like, think about it. those women have been destroying men for decades. I mean, Robert Kardashian got A fucking cancer. Everyone blamed it for him being on OJ's team. No, man. I'm gonna bet you that was Chris. She gave him the cancer. Uh, you know, Bruce is now Caitlyn. You know. I think Lamar Odom has, you know, he's got brain damage from, you know, like being oxygen deprived from OD and on fucking crack in a whorehouse. To be fair, uh, Caitlyn Jenner ran a person over with her car and she's fine. Yep. She's invincible. She's stunning okay, and brave. All right. Yeah. Kate, Caitlyn may be fine, <laughs> but I, I miss Bruce. All right. <laughs> I miss Bruce. So that, that's why I feel bad for Kanye. He walked into a situation where, like, every dude gets fucked up. And you know what? I feel really bad for Travis Barker. That man survived a fucking plane crash, and now he's with one of them. It's like, like, have you not I, seen Final Destination? Oh, You're sh- tipping fate here, bro. Wait, Travis Barker? Survived? Yeah, the drummer from Blink-182. He was in a plane crash. Yeah. Holy shit. When yeah. that happen? Oh, years ago now. Uh, it was him and his buddy. Oh, what was that dude? A DJ. Uh, shit, I can't remember the guy's name. Like, I think he ended up dying in the plane crash, though. I remember hearing something about that, yeah. Like, Travis Barker had, like, a whole bunch of burns all over his body. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's like. And he, uh. Him, yeah, exactly, Tier. The sucky by. Exactly. <laughs> like, you know. I, if, if I survived a plane crash, the last thing I would want to do is be anywhere near any of the Kardashians. You know? Like, you, you won, dude. You, you you got a chance to <laughs> to keep going. Why would you why would you risk that? Hmm. Well, we've been going for two hours, so I think it's about time we uh, close up the shop for now. Because uh, I got uh, some other stuff to do here real quick before bed. Uh, thank you all for coming out. We've been your minions of the zoo. Uh, be sure to watch tomorrow where Mr. Adam is the host. Taking over from my oh, Monday yeah. nights. Yeah. Uh, thank yeah, you very tune much. Yeah, tune in tomorrow. We're going to be... Uh, uh, I said, brother, we're going to be hanging out and doing some interesting, uh, magnificent interesting type of topics that you will be believing are you doing a macho man impression or do you need to take a shit oh yeah your pet monkey hit me with a folding chair Uh, (laughs) and uh so (laughs) hey man props to 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 macho man he saved us from the rapture so you know yes um (laughs) he, he he was martyred for saving us for the rapture uh and uh yeah <laughs> we've been your means thank you all for coming out i hope you had a good time watching some paint dry and yeah uh take care everyone the zoo is closed hi everybody night <laughs>